Hi everyone, these are my dogs, Henry and Sophie. And Sophie is going to help us, Henry's the loud one. Sophie's going to help us with hypothesis testing and experimentation here in a minute. Um, first we have to go over some terminology. So we're going to give them some bones to keep them quiet, Henry, uh, while we go over these flashcards. All right, right this way. Okay, so first I'm going to tell you guys about the two basic types of science. There's discovery-based science where you make observations and record what you see, and there's hypothesis-based science where you do experiments to test or explain your previous observations. So I have previously observed that Sophie, the black dog, is a very picky eater. She turns up her little dog nose and says, hmm, I am not eating that. And so today, we're going to do an experiment looking at which type of food she prefers. So we've got the dry food and the canned food. Before we get to that though, we have to go through the types of variables. The first type of variable is the control variable. There are typically several control variables, and these are variables that we hold constant throughout the experiment so that they do not affect the end result. So our control variables today are Sophie. We're gonna use Sophie for our experiment for both types of food, and we're not gonna use Henry because that wouldn't bias our result. Um, we have as a second control variable, the amount of food so I weighed out the food, so we have the same amount to start with. And then our third control variable in this experiment is the plate. I didn't want to test the color of the plate or the shape of the plate or anything like that. So I'm using the same plate, so the plate is a controlled variable. The second type of variable that we need to cover is the independent variable. There is one independent variable per experiment. This is the one that we are changing, and we are looking to see how the independent variable impacts the resulting or dependent variable. So in this case, our independent variable is the type of dog food. So we are not testing, again, the type of dog food and the color of the plate. We just have one independent variable, and that is the type of dog food. Henry is chiming in to help us out. The final type of variable is the dependent variable. You can have one or more dependent variables, and these are the resulting or outcome variables that you're interested in. These variables do have to be measurable, though. So we could say that our dependent variable is the food preference. Which type of food does Sophie prefer? But how are we going to measure food preference? We can't ask her. She won't tell us, ooh, I like the crunchy one. No, no, no. So we have to change our dependent variable to something that can be measured. So instead of food preference, we'll just X that out, we are going to use amount of food consumed as our dependent variable. So this is a result variable that depends on our independent variable. So the, we think that the amount of food that she c is going to eat will depend on the type of food and we're able to, to measure the amount of food that she eats. So amount of food is going to be our dependent variable. Okay, you guys all got that? So again, the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. Another way to think about that is that the independent variable affects the dependent variable. So the type of food is going to affect how much of it she eats, or we can say how much of the food she eats is going to depend on the type of food. So that's how the two variables are connected. Okay, got that? So before we do the experiment, we have to go over hypotheses. Then we'll be ready to bring Sophie in and run the experiment. The hypothesis is a prediction of the outcome. It is important that the hypothesis account for all realistic outcomes. 
So we have to have a hypothesis that says she's going to eat more of the food or less of the food, and we have to have a hypothesis that says she'll eat the same amount of each, because those are our realistic outcomes. She's going to eat the same amount of each, or she's going to eat a different amount of one. She is not going to eat them and turn into a dragon, so we don't have to worry about including unrealistic outcomes in our hypothesis, but we do have to include all realistic outcomes. There are two basic types of hypotheses that you'll need to write. The null hypothesis is always the no effect hypothesis. So we could say either the type of food will have no effect on the amount of food eaten, or we could say Sophie will eat the same amount of both foods. These are just different ways to phrase the null or no effect hypothesis. The second type of hypothesis is the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is where we are going to state the effect that we expect to see based on our previous observations. So since I've previously observed that Sophie is a picky eater, and I've previously observed that the canned food smells more yummy than the dry food, I am expecting as my alternative hypothesis that she will eat more canned food than dry food. So within the null and the alternative, I've included all of what I think are the realistic outcomes. Either that the type of food will not affect how much she eats, or that the type of food will affect how much she eats and that she'll eat more of the canned food. Okay, you guys got that? So let's bring her in and see how she decides the experiment. Sophie! Let's see, she smells them both and goes for the canned food! So, in this case, we are going to accept the alternative hypothesis and reject the null. We cannot say that we've proved that she likes canned food better, because it could be that she would like a different type of dry food better than canned. So, you always accept or reject the hypothesis, but you can never say that you've proved or disproved.